kill everybody on a battleship, an enemy battleship that was coming at you. All right, you would drop them dead. Before they even hit the ground, they'd be dead because they'd be microwaved and dead, okay? But now they've made them into um, mobile weapons that you can put a backpack and you can fry someone or you can injure someone like this with a weaponized microwave. Here's the thing, it, sound, it sounds really science fiction and it, it is a, it's a natural reaction for people to giggle because um, it's, a, it's like a covert attack. But once it happens to you, very quickly you become aware of, of these programs. So it is something to keep in the back of your mind. It's, it's a growing crime and as, um, as your generation grows up, more and more people are going to be victimized by this. Hey, do you want to fly? We're just trying to get the word out. Yeah. And I'd like to bring up uh, Romola's site too. It's, yeah. She's done such a good job. In fact, she's coming out with a very long story about a woman named Millicent Black. Yeah. Her tormentor is actually a washed out super soldier who's decided, decided to use the technology to kill women because he hates women. Yeah. You know, so look for that story to be released really soon on everydayconcern.net. Yeah. Karen Stewart. Yeah. And. I love Ramola. Um, if they go to uh, bombersweapon.com, we have the article that Seth Farber wrote linked there. That'll okay. if you just click that, you get over to Ramola's site. She's done an astonishing job of uh, recording this for history and for explaining to people who are not technologically savvy or are not so aware of the advanced weaponry that they have kept secret for so long because they knew that the American public would say, oh, wait a minute, no human being should have this type of weapon. This is uh, an obscenity. This is uh, uh, war crimes. You don't use this type of technology on human beings. It's just too cruel. Yeah. So, you know, she's done a marvelous job as have a lot of other people. Uh -huh. Um, I've, been, I've, I've posted a lot of YouTube material, but cool. I don't have my own website. All right. Just getting your stuff out there. Yeah. J uh, what's the name of your YouTube channel? Um, if, you, if you search, I'm, I'm a PhD in neurobiology, so if you just search uh, Dr. Matthew Aaron, targeted individual, um, I don't really have my own channel. I post it on a variety of different places. Okay. Yeah. Kind of her, I was like, oh, I was blabbering over, oh. his, over him talking. Oh, so no, sorry. no, it's okay. Uh, do you have a website or any plug to, for people to reach you? <laughs> Facebook or anything, um, or Twitter? I do have a, uh, a Facebook, uh, and there's a, I have a, a public page where I'm putting all this garbage, and uh, I think it's uh, under NSA whistleblower Karen Stewart. So there is a public page as well as my Facebook account. I don't have a website, but... Uh, Ramola has uh, allowed me to write a little bit on her website, uh, everyday.com, and she's done a couple articles. Yeah, uh, Everyday Concerned. Everydayconcerned.net, yeah. So a lot of great stuff on that, on that site. But like I said, there are other sites like uh, uh, surveillanceissues.com, um, and then uh, biggerthansnowden.com has got all kinds of people on it, and uh, Spencer keeps adding more people, which is great to see how many people are coming out and say, this is happening, it needs to stop, you know? And one of the old trade groups was Freedom for Poor Harassment Spreads have been shut down. It's like PAX International now for people interested. And yeah. uh, there's, a, there's a good um, site. T Terry from Oregon has a good site. I think it's called Stop Gang Stalking Crimes. Oh, yeah, Terry. Net or dot or dot com. Stop gang stalking crimes. Dot net. Something like that. Just try both. Yeah. But I know him. It's a good site. Yeah. Well, given the widespread distribution of these crimes and allegations coming out everywhere, probably all uh, modern countries have their own programs to develop these weapons, and probably the ideas are trickling into the hands of criminal networks in all of these countries. So um, it's just getting out of hand. In my particular case, my targeting, I knew some of the people that were perpetrating this against me and all of the evidence, I mean, this, this is some of my evidence. Mm -hmm. I have evidence like, like this right here. Mm -hmm. And all of the observations I made 
make me conclude that this was um, more of a organized crime group. And so I don't think they yeah. were doing testing on me per se, but... Oh, so. yeah, I'm the same way. It's it's moved on to... They did testing at some point, but they weaponized it and uh, deployed it for operational use. And now they have these great weapons for population control and harassment of people that they don't like. Dissidents, whistleblowers. Yeah, and you can, it, it, as long as you can intimidate people in any way and, and get away with it, you can run organized crime that way. Um, you can do all kinds of racketeering that way. And um, I, I think I don't think some of these some of these weapons and technologies are coming from are being leaked from uh, military contractors and programs like that. But I think now uh, you can just build these devices using off off the shelf components if you know what you're doing. It, not not the really powerful ones, but you can build um, ones that are still powerful enough to use for harassment and intimidation. All, all you need is basically. Um, different kinds of pulsed radio frequency generators. There's components in the medical industry that you could use to do that. And there's even some companies that sell um, electromagnetic pulse generators as kind of like as under a thinly veiled guise of scientific research equipment. But it's 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 harassment devices, it's weapons because because the same companies sell, you know, like night vision gear and squirrel shockers and stun guns and so a company like that is not selling legitimate scientific research equipment. The, the one company I'm thinking of in particular is called Information Unlimited and they do sell some fairly powerful directed energy weapons uh, on, under their EMP section. Right. As well. Yeah. Well that's for sure the, the crimes are definitely growing in prevalence. Yeah. Which is um, not something we want, but it is going to hasten exposure on this. At some point, uh, it'll become common enough that um, enough people will demand something is done about it. Subjugation and financial control are definitely themes that permeate all of this. And I, and I think um, some of these networks that are using this directed energy technology and organized stalking tactics have now have their tentacles infiltrating a lot of institutions in society. Um, I know when I when I got targeted in Vancouver, Canada, uh, I went from not knowing anything about this to seeing how uh, perpetrators and affiliates of these groups were literally in in businesses and. Uh, roles in in that city, just throughout the city, and and, it, and I it went from I went from never having been targeted to seeing literally hundreds and hundreds of people participating in my stalking. It, it was it was terrifying at first, but I I quickly adapted as as all targeted individuals do. Yeah, the, the stalking networks vast in every town. No matter where you go, they already have someone there on the payroll who will come and stalk you watch you, even at restaurants, like infraguard type people. Yeah, let's, I mean, you name it. Um, I, in Vancouver, um, the taxi cab services were, especially the dispatchers were heavily oh, yeah. infiltrated. Because like, uh, they're almost like informants and, and whatnot. Yeah. They're trained, the, the cops can go to them and have them do whatever they want. The cops and military, they're all trained somewhere to do this. Yes, some, some Vancouver police officers participated in my harassment. It was really sad. And um, I also noticed that a lot of the, the perpetrators that were doing this actually looked afraid of me for standing up and having courage. And they also, some of them actually looked like they had remorse. And the impression that that gave me is that a lot of them are controlled through fear. And um, I think that's how these systems are run. Some of them may be former victims who they were given a, a way out by 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 turning into basically foot soldiers for these uh, ridiculous harassment networks. Yeah, this is like uh, the old hey, Stasi days, where. Let me know if you have any questions. He's just asking. Me. Oh, yes. I'm just, I'm just oh, hearing. Yeah, no, no problem. It, in Germany, they actually had everyone spying for the government. Everyone, including the lawyers. You mean East Germany? Yeah, the, the Stasi secret the Stasi, police. Yeah, yeah. This, this was my apartment window. Um, I lived up in Canada, mm -hmm. and um, 
I, there were, um, across the alley from my apartment, there was um, a building where I saw some illegal activities going on. And I confronted those people and told them that they, they were harassing other people in, in Vancouver. And um, I didn't realize it at the time, but this group of people living in that building were actually a fairly powerful organized crime group. And what they did to try to get me to move away from there and to not see them anymore is I, I surmised they started using some kind of a, an energy device on me. And um, I have a background in science, I have, I'm a PhD. And so um, as a counter, I, I was figuring, okay, what kind of energy can come through the wall? Well, electromagnetic energy can do that, um, like light. But this wasn't visible. And I, I said, I hope it's not x-rays. So the only other um, thing that I assumed that it was like lower frequencies, so radio waves. And then um, knowing that radio waves and microwaves can heat I items, I steamed up my apartment to try to bleed off the static electricity that I felt, and also to make like, to steam up my windows so they couldn't st see in, and to, um, to make a, a, a weak shield. Now when I did that, right where I had been attacked, two different spots, once where I was sitting at my desk, once where I was standing, I noticed these marks in my window where the steam did not condense onto the glass. This was in winter. Now, uh, you can look on YouTube under Dr. Matthew Aaron, and I posted a more detailed video on this. This pattern of circles actually matches what's called a concentric ring resonator. And that is a type of waveguide that's used in a device called a maser, which is a microwave laser. And um, it, it, this pattern matches exactly. So I still, this is not, I'm not law enforcement. I don't have all the evidence but I was, I was electrified and burned by some energy source. I steamed up my windows, and then right where that happened, I found something that matches a concentric ring resonator, which is used in a microwave laser. And uh, these marks were permanent, by the way. I, th these are taped from a message that I'd put in my window. I scraped that off, I cleaned with Windex, and a month later I did this again, because I, I was harassed a, a second time this way, and these marks uh, were still in the glass. The, the, the hydrophobicity somehow of the glass was permanently changed by that energy source. Now, I wrote um, a report of all this. I tried to go to law enforcement. I sent my report to the RCMP. Uh, this was in Canada, right? This was in Canada. <clears throat> but these um, people are making similar claims all over the world on this. So um, I did report this to the authorities, but uh, they, didn't, they didn't write back to me. Um, and that's okay, uh, but I'm just trying to, um, we're, we're trying to get the story out because if you, if you look online under the keyword electronic harassment, you will see that there are actually many, many thousands of people now. And, and so this looks like kind of a, a new form of harassment that's going around the world. Yes, and we have flyers. You could take some. Sure. The websites will explain more on this. And the... If this is something that's new, we, what we really want, we just want um, law enforcement to start trying to, it, it, is a, it is a challenging issue to be sure because it's very hard to collect um, physical evidence. Also, um, for the most part, people are being harassed, they're not being killed, but they're being harassed very, very sadistically for sometimes for months at a time. Years. Years, years even. These are people that the government has decided they want either dead by kill, so they'll kill themselves or someone else, so they just harass them endlessly. Well, he said, you, you said the government. I, I, or case, others, contractors. I, I blame uh, organized crime, but um, we, so we, we don't have all the answers. We're, we're trying to get, we, we would like help from law enforcement to get the answers and help from the government to investigate this, where this is coming from. Because it, it is a threat to everyone, actually. It can be any, to anyone. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Thank you okay. so much. Thank you. Did he say Agenda 21? No, no, he said it can be a threat to anyone. That's true. Yeah. Thank you. As a, as a neuroscientist, I, can, I know, you know, the, it's, it's actually documented in the literature that you can influence um, brain processes using, using uh, pulsed radio frequency energy. You can create visual perceptual effects. You can create auditory perceptual effects. You can cause people to see things that aren't really there. You can cast ghostly-like images um, into their living space. 
and you can also um, cause action potentials in the brain or nerve impulses which can cause things like um, seizure like muscle uh, uncontrolled muscle movements body movements heart racing um, instantaneous nausea by stimulating the gut uh, mood swings you can do all of those things and th none of that is um, those aren't just our claims all of that's documented actually absolutely I've seen well radar has been around yeah since World War II but I, I would say the combined use of radar and pain inducing directed energy makes a lot of sense because they use the radar side of it to um, target you through solid objects and um, so, so there, there is a, there's a dual purpose there between both the, the surveillance and the pain inducing and uh, bio effects um, and, and in fact I think some of the radar guns themselves if, if they're amped up in power and they're tuned just right can be used um, as harassment tools as well. Oh yeah, well one, they can track and image you and learn the characteristics about you and they know what your location was. So if you're hiding in a building, they would know where to send the lasers, aim them right at specific parts of your body, your brain, hit the right parts of your brain to activate the regions responsible for making you hear and see whatever they wanted or to make you move your muscles around. They can even make you walk and talk to say things, laugh through you and other stuff. Those through-the-wall imaging systems are now, I believe, in widespread use by fire departments, and they do have legitimate purposes um, for finding victims in a, in a burning building, for example. And they're good. They're um, good enough to see whether that victim is, has a beating heart or not. But um, the problem with all of this uh, radio frequency, radar, directed energy technology, even if it has valid applications is that because it's um, because it operates covertly it is too much of a temptation for sociopathic and corrupt individuals and they can pock they can borrow that from their departments and use it for um, criminal uh, purposes basically um, I, I believe a lot of these officials um, are contributing to organized crime they're corrupt and they can borrow these technologies um, to do to, to carry out crimes on the side, crimes that involve harassing and intimidating people. There must be some pressure on the media or some lobbyists, especially I think the cell phone lobby and um, wireless communications that are trying to suppress this because when this comes out, people will start to question the, the dangers of RF um, energy in general and that will affect a lot of people's bottom line in industry. So there's a lot of pressure to keep this quiet. In fact, I like to say the Silence is deafening. The silence is so much that it it's actually raises suspicions. Why is there so much silence surrounding this issue? And I wonder how many TIs walked by, past today and, and didn't say, didn't out themselves, you know, and just were like, I saw a lot of people looking at this at this stuff. Okay, I'm giving this to you, but this is, if you write to me... They don't put me on camera, bro. Okay. All right. If yeah, you I'm write to me, I'll try to collect anybody, like you're from Virginia, right? Yes. Okay. Anybody who writes to me who says, I'm from Virginia, I will put you together. Okay. You write to me and say, I'm from Baltimore, yeah, where you from? Or Maryland. Oh, you from Virginia? Yeah. And, and if I have somebody in Maryland, I'll say, do you want to get, do you yeah. want to contact this guy? I, I should have made a, an organized stalking sign, too, because yeah, it's not all directed energy crazy. weapons. It we, is. We should have. Yes, I was told by Dr. Webster Tarpley, PhD, that they call this counter surveillance provocation stalking. And he explained how the NSA sits at the very top, spying on everyone, intercepting information, also probably in control of all the electronic warfare systems to hit people with lasers from space. And the information from surveilling people and the operations, that's handed to the 1.5 fusion centers per state and law enforcement intelligence units like the uh, New York Red Squad, San Francisco Red Squad, and other places. Right. But my, my, my personal view, uh, that all may be true. I, I, can't, I can't really know for sure or comment on that. But, but the idea of, of terrorizing people through this has now leaked out and it's, it's more widespread than that. That's my personal view. Oh, it's it's, it's way out there yeah. because one, they're hiring perpetrators in hundreds of thousands of range, uh, even on like places like Craigslist where Homeland Security had recruitment videos and they even pay 
pays, uh, like the FBI pays people stipends to take part in this. Um, and uh, the whole national security state thing, if you were to get everyone involved, you, you could think of a reason why this would be good if you could have everyone on the streets at, at least many people especially if they work for businesses or something or they got some type of government contracts that they would be watching and doing what the government wanted and this would be good if a terrorist came in they could sit there and let the terrorists live in society but watch that person they could parallel construct they could say well this witness is really how we uncovered this plot it wasn't our NSA use or whatever Whatever legitimate purposes they had for this, the temptation is too great to use it for organized crime on the side. That, yeah. That's that's my that's my feeling. Yeah, because it's all been turned against regular people. It's not really being used for the terrorist yeah. people. Yeah, I mean, no, the people that are doing this are terrorists. Yeah, uh, they're terrorizing people. The people the people that are doing this are terrorists. And if they're doing it in the name of anti-terrorism, that is the that is the biggest hypocrisy I've ever heard in my life. We are live at the White House on May 24th. Ooh, security members. Oh shit. And I think once you have these networks set up, because um, you know, people are getting paid or whatever, but sometimes they just do it. These guys are sick and they just do it for fun and they, they just do it for fun and to, and for practice sometimes I think. So I, I think if you if you have no idea, I know why I was targeted. I I I bumped into some bad criminals and I saw what they were doing and they wanted me they wanted to take me down, right? But in, if, if you have no idea, these guys are sick. These guys are very, and that's why we need to stop this because they will not stop unless some of them start going to jail. They will not stop. They, they, they. Well, I put the, the, uh, uh. Did I tell you guys about how people who are stalking me whistle at me? Oh, whistled that, at you? They come at me, they whistle at me. Yeah, that's one of the things they do. Uh, some of Ella's friends in Oregon heard it too. Like sheriffs will whistle at me when I come into a building. When you hear whistles around here, and that's what you might be wanting to listen for. Is them? That's them well, most likely. They'll do whatever. If um, at point A, if someone does something odd, it's just it might just be something odd. But then if that's repeated at point B and point C and point D from four different people, then you know it was coordinated, and that's what that's what starts to mess with your head, right? And that's when you know it's a big group, too. Yes. I know. It, it, I'm shocked on you know this is so. They use a lot of mind control. They use a lot of mind control. I just knew it was going to be a lot. When I seen it all, I knew it was going to be a lot. But it was supposed to be more. What do you talk? What do you mean? Yeah, oh. I thought it was going oh, yeah, to be, yeah. I thought it was going to be more. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, I said, no, I'm coming. No, you know what? Seriously, we, we have to do this better. Because yeah. you got my card? Uh, I would there. like to get your card. Yes. I'll be there. I mean, man, keep stock more, but I don't care. I'm gonna go okay. on faith. My name, my, my name is Matthew, by the way. I nice to meet you. I've been looking. You know what I mean? My name is Dr. Matthew Aaron, and um, uh, this evidence that I'm showing here, I have described this in greater detail on a YouTube video, which you can find by searching Dr. Matthew Aaron, A A R O N, targeted individual. I, I, I hope you will um, look at the 20 minute video, which I in which I describe this evidence, and please share it around because I think this is actually a rare example of uh, forensic evidence. Even though this crime, it's very hard to collect forensic evidence. By steaming up my windows, I I, I um, uh, stumbled upon evidence by by accident, basically, by luck, I should say. Badass. Well, they've tapped into the old Roman times where you throw people to the lions and, and they get the watched and people is. enjoy watching them torn apart. This is the same thing. It's absolutely the same thing. Todd, did you say you have had a lot of um, validating support from medical professionals? Yes. Okay, that's good. And how, how do you, um, what's a good way to get medical professionals that are outside of these networks? 
or how have you done that? Uh, yes, well, I use, I just have regular old Medicaid, and I will find someone, I will handpick people if I can. Like, in Oregon, we have the Mind Freedom uh, group. That's oh, yeah, that's a great. Founded by David Oakes, who's a Harvard graduate. He was abducted while he was going to school at Harvard in the 80s and drugged and stuff, tortured. And then he became a psychiatric survivor afterwards and started doing activism and so fight this. So remind me, mind freedom is just in general about psychiatric abuses, right? Yeah, especially coercive not, not targeting, psychiatry. Not targeting in general. Well, in specific. well, they're actually getting calls about this all over the country. So their headquarters in Eugene, Oregon, they're uh, United Nations roster recognized, and they're a human rights group. They've got thousands of members and doctors and stuff, part of them. So mind freedom would be a good one to support the bill proposal. Are they also uh, set up in California? Yes, they have a group there. Um, they get calls from people who allege that this was done to them in mental hospitals, jails, and other places. Um, even like some people, they'll say, hey, like my dad was in MK Ultra, and uh, now I'm being nuked and irradiated and stuff. They used to send people to me for help. Okay. Um, oh, they really? believe it's real. One of their employees was a former military contractor. You worked for USIS. They had classified documents at USIS, she said, on this technology. Uh, and she backs us up that this is all happening. Mind freedom. That's yeah, a good yeah, one. yeah. Okay. Um, Are they powerful? They're, they're just like... I'm, I mean, they're psychiatrists and psychologists and they're uh, doctors that are part of the group. Like they have social workers, they have a database of doctors. They might be some of the better ones to go to. Right. Okay. The cops value this technology too much, so they wait for the victims to come in so they can discredit them with the report. Said crazy things about technology uh, and whatnot. It is being stalked and harassed by invisible people and they, they will spruce it up oftentimes. Yeah. Uh, um, I talked to some guy, I showed him a meter, and I said, this is electromagnetic radiation. It measures electromagnetic radiation. And he wrote in his report that I was being hit with gamma radiation. I'm like, if I were hit with gamma yeah. radiation, I wouldn't be here. Yeah, and they, they know better. They're real educated, smart. Most of these people are former military, and now they're police officers. Well, I think the, the police officers that don't know about this are not that well educated and I think there are a lot of police officers that aren't that well educated and if we want if we want law enforcement for the 21st century we're actually going to need better educated police officers well one of the t things about this technology the police can use you know about this issue electronic harassment done with um, radio frequency devices and normally uh, it doesn't leave any marks on your body but it can still have really it induces pain and it can affect your heart and your brain but in, in extreme cases it leaves um, it leaves it can leave uh, burns on the body the first microwave ovens were basically uh, made out of radio waves so yeah. now um, they actually have new technology that's falling into the hands of criminals can shoot the microwaves out in a beam. And that's actually my apartment window from Canada. That's your apartment That's my window? apartment window. And two of those marks were made when they um, stopped my heart with, uh, with uh, radio frequency devices. And I steamed up my windows as a, as a countermeasure, and those are permanent marks on the glass. 
and those marks match patented technology that's used in microwave lasers. Uh, I did send all of this to um, the FBI and the RCMP. So I've been very vocal about this um, to, to, to federal authorities. Did, did you get left mark? This is my ear. Oh, this that, is my ear. That's your ear. This is me. Vancouver, Canada. And um, that was uh, a burn from a microwave. Uh, this, this person, uh, these people, I got their permission to put their pictures on here. Yeah. This person actually went to the doctor and was diagnosed as having radiation burns, not from uh, ionizing radiation, but from non-ionizing radiation. And the FBI took her seriously, actually. So the FBI does know about these crimes on some level, but the crimes are very hard to um, to investigate because they don't leave that much evidence. What, what we really need is for the FBI to go after these groups as organized crime. These are organized crime groups that are doing this. And this person, James, is uh, from Oregon, and um, people that people that have moved into his neighborhood do this. It's easy to do this to people in their homes because these signals can pass right through walls. As you know, your cell phone uses a microwave signal, yeah. and the signal goes right through, right into your house, right? So these uh, these harassment devices go can go right through um, walls, floors, ceilings. So it's uh, it's a very sinister type of crime that is used to terrorize people. It's, it's actually I, I like to think of it as a, a type of terrorism. Okay. Yeah. So look it up on uh, my name is Dr. Matthew Aaron. Yeah. If you if you search on YouTube, Dr. Matthew Aaron, targeted individual. Aaron A A R O N, and I have a 20 minute YouTube which discusses that. I'll take some flyers. I have a video on that. Um, can you remember that? I want you to watch my video. Dr. Matthew Aaron, targeted individual. Okay. Yes, and we have flyers too. Uh, this has some more info, patents and stuff on the government's technology that they used to do this. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thanks, thanks, for, thanks for stopping by. I'll tell you what, the best place is when you I, I don't generally, um, I, I stick to the more organized crime than, um, but that, that's also good. that's what I saw, but also it's a good thing to love And also, I mean, it's my personal belief that there are people in federal law enforcement that would do the right thing and are on our side, that there's like a cone of silence over it. But you know, there if, if, if the public voice changes a little bit, um, there's a lot of people ready to do something about this. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to win their hearts and minds a little bit. And I'm in agreement. Yeah. Um, I've, I've done that too, talking about being stalking and about bloating the terrorist watch list for money. I thought, I've even done things like put that on the back of my car. And I've had people, I've watched them in the mirror view mirror take out their, their cameras and take a picture of yeah. the information I put on the back of my car. I actually, in Florida, when they first started gang stalking me, because in Florida, my I discovered the identity of uh, one of the NSA executives who broke into my house. Yeah. Okay. And so I had my lawyer subpoena that information. And uh, uh, we're trying to talk about a type of crime, and we want help from the government. That's why we're here. Because in this country. Um, in a democracy, right? We can ask the government for help. We're asking for help. Thank you. Some of them can be reflected by something shiny. And I will tell you that copper actually reflects a broader spectrum of these weapons than aluminum. Okay. Okay. So yeah, you like copper the, roof in Florida, I heard, yes, right? Yes. And it worked really well from oh, yeah. the tax from above. But that thing about the um, zip line, that's amazing. That makes so much <laughs> sense. They were just using that to scatter it towards you, right? The, yep. They must have had like some kind of a radio wave generator on the other end there just, and just, I mean, it's simple. They're using it as a giant antenna, basically. Exactly. And it was probably coming off um, in a diffuse pattern, not, not as a... And the minute I took it down, because I did take it down, I went out in the middle of the night and I cut it down. And the, and the minute I did that, my tinnitus went away. But when they were doing that, the, the field was probably very broad, right? So it was like, 
hitting the whole house, right? Yes. It yes. wasn't coming out as a sharp pencil beam, right? No, and I will tell you, in Florida, I was staying with my parents who are in the 80s, and they do not hear high-pitched noises, right, all right. right? What they were hearing was a roaring. Okay. I mean, I'm getting uh, yeah. high as can be, right? right? But they're hearing a roaring in their ears. Well, they don't have high-pitched sound right, right. Even that they can hear. But it went away for them, too. Okay. You know? So, I mean, I just, I sat there looking at this thing and, because uh, my tinnitus just came on immediately. And then I said, well, isn't that interesting? These people get into an extremely expensive house and they do, don't look like they're old enough really to have money like that. And they have several children, none of which really should be on a zip line. They're right. too young. And they probably weren't even using it anyway, right? Very minimal. Okay. This was organized by um, just individuals that are loosely connected with each other. Okay. Yeah. There's no there's no centralized organization. And what are you guys protesting exactly? Uh, we are protesting um, this here. It's the government's surveillance grid, the space capability. It has the ability to give your body an MRI scan from space for surveillance purposes, and there's patents behind it. Do uh, William Benny, the NSA whistleblower, supports this happening. Dr. Robert Duncan, firm of CIA, DOD, NASA, all that, actually helped develop the technology. They can give you a brain scan, and they fully de learned how to decrypt the brain, so they get all your thoughts, your passwords, and all that. Gotcha. It has the ability to shoot lasers into specific parts of your brain to remotely control you, put voices in your head, images, which is known as synthetic telepathy. And there's a patent from 1974 by DOD contractor Dorn Margolin Inc. Uh, for satellites and military radar to read and alter brain waves. Uh, apparatus and method to remotely read and alter brain waves. So uh, law enforcement okay. and military go around using this on civilians to discredit them and harass them. Uh, sir, I'll, I'll, I'll just answer for myself too. Okay. Um, I, it, it, more simply, I'm protesting. Um, a growing type of crime that's out there. It's like an organized crime. And they use um, organized stalking tactics and um, they also use um, energy weapons to um, basically to harass people. So the, 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 they're yeah. called organized stalking and electronic harassment are the terms in, yes. in a broad sense. Yeah, and, 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 the, and the protest is basically that the um, law enforcement is slow to adapt to this because it is, it is a difficult crime to deal with. Yeah. And we're, we're, we, we'd, like, um, we'd like help in that process from law enforcement because some people are, a lot of people are getting hurt by, by this. Yeah, so you could take a copy of this. I'm not allowed to, unfortunately. Yeah. I appreciate okay. the offer, though. Yes, there's a... I, just very quickly, for your own edification or anybody sure. around you, all right, there is a website called everydayconcerned.net okay. that is telling different people's stories, but also the woman is a brilliant writer who is looking into these technologies and bringing it down to a level that we can understand. And I would add that the police uh, really do need a technology part of the police. Just like when they have hazmat teams for fire departments, yeah. the police need to get educated, and the, and the Secret Service too, okay, in the fact that uh, mobile directed energy weapons were used in Iraq. If you look up Fallujah, battle for airports, for the airport in Fallujah, you will find that there was video taken of Iraqi soldiers who were hit by directed energy weapons and what was left of them was bag of bones. They dehydrated them. This is not legal under the uh, Geneva Convention, so the American Army, this technology is out into the hands of people who've never had it. You know, US 18, 18 US Code says, these are weapons of mass destruction and they are not allowed in the hands of civilians. They are not allowed to be used on non-combatant civilians. So all kinds of federal laws being broken because people are saying, oh, I can't imagine this technology, and there's a lot out there showing it exists, and I can't imagine that anybody's using it. Well, in this car, if you have it powered with your engine, you can kill all those people in front of your car. Yeah. Oh, they would drop dead of heart attacks and other things. I've been hit with it. Um, yeah. I, I overnight, overnight, I mean, I'm 60, okay? I was a 
intelligence analyst with the National Security Agency. Okay? So I can, if somebody wants to call me, I will vouch for that and give them proof, all right? And um, I can vouch for the fact these things exist. I worked um, weapons in space, I worked weapons proliferation for the last 10 years of my career. These exist, and they should not be in the hands of anyone outside the military, and in the military, they have very strict protocol to use them. You don't just pull them out and use them. Yeah. You have to get high I would like to, to say to use them. I would like to add one thing, and that just that I think that um, now these, te these technologies off the shelf, um, they, they, can, they can be put together in a, in a less powerful way by, just by people that have no that have illegal uh, aims in mind. And so yeah. it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a criminal thing too. Yeah. And the main, the main uh, concern I have is just that a lot of people are being victimized and we would just like um, law enforcement to help us out. Right. Yeah. I just and gotta add, I, I got to ask you two more questions okay. real quick. Sure. Do you guys have a permit? Um, Frank had a permit. Yeah, the, the person that organized this, um, who isn't here, yeah, and, he and we've been trying morning. to contact he got us a him, permit. Uh, he, he did get a permit yeah. for this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Frank, let me see if uh, I can get you his, his name. His name is Frank Allen. You don't have to worry about that. Okay. okay. And do you guys, are you, is your aim to get arrested? No, no, no. Not I Allen. prefer not. No. <laughs> okay, perfect. No, no. <laughs> no, no. And, and actually, we're, we're I'm, I mean, I'm friends with the government I'm, in, in the sense that I am not protesting the government. I am trying to personally bring something to light that I think is a concern. For, for you, for your children, for, for everyone. So we're, we're trying to be constructive. Right. Yeah, appreciate and, that, guys. And, I gotta, I gotta and, run. Anyway, I could just say that you. there's other delivery systems, though. If you go and look at uh, Trump'sWeapon.com or Obama'sWeapon.com, uh, Eugene, Oregon was raided by the Navy for two years between 1976 and 1978, and this was in the Eugene Register Guard National News. The FCC eventually investigated and confirmed that it was the Navy in Alameda, California, broadcasting frequencies in Eugene, Oregon, hitting hundreds of people for two years. It put uh, redness in their skin, uh, vibrations in their body, sound in their head, pressurized sensations in their head, and stuff like that. And uh, Medford, Oregon was similarly hit. This is all stuff you can Google. Um, Medford, Oregon. Uh, I got to run. Yeah. Um, hey, right Rash of suicides. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you do that? You're, you got the camera rolling the whole time, right? Oh, yeah, man. This is going to actually be good on YouTube.
It's true. 